Okay, this is gonna be a video for intermediate to advanced level investors, and I'm gonna use Philip Morris International, which is ticker symbol PM, as a kind of a hypothetical example of capturing an arbitrage or a spread between your cost of borrowing and the dividend yield on your common stock. And so just the, the details here, the stock is trading, Philip Morris is trading at around $82 a share uh, in December 15th, 2020. Um, the dividend yield on the stock is about 5.7%. So it's a relatively pretty attractive yield. And then if you look in the 10K of a company, you can get a sense of what their borrowing costs are. And so, for example, they've got some uh, bonds due in 2031 with an interest rate of 0.8%. So that's 11-year paper with the interest rate below 1%. They've got some 20-year bonds with coupons in the 2% range. And we're in this low interest rate environment, lower for longer, and yet there's still quite a bit of appetite for long-term bonds from decent quality corporations. So a company like Philip Morris could probably very easily go into the marketplace and get an, an issue 20-year bonds, probably for an interest rate of, say, 2.5%, plus or minus, take the proceeds, and instantly buy back stock. And if you think about how this works, you're getting money at a 2.5% expense cost and you're buying back stock with a 5.7 percent dividend yield that's the the cost that you're saving yourself from and the spread between these two numbers is 320 basis points that's that's a very juicy spread and you would want to capture that to the extent that your balance sheet can allow you to do so and then when you think through the tax implications remember interest expense it's expensed and so it's paid with pre-tax dollars and dividend payments are after-tax cash flow, so they're paid with after-tax dollars. And so this 320 basis point spread is actually amplified by tax considerations. And then probably the most important component is the inflation component over the 20 years of the life of this bond. Remember, inflation chews away at the value of a sum of cash that you have to pay in the future. It helps borrowers. And so Philip Morris would be paying back this debt 20 years from now with inflated dollars, less valuable dollars. But dividends tend to be inflationary in the sense that shareholders expect dividends to grow over time. And so they're getting cheap paper that they can issue that's fixed rate and helps them when inflation kicks in. And they're retiring kind of expensive equity and helping other shareholders and protecting themselves from a potentially growing liability of dividend payments in the future. So you would do this until the cows come home, until your balance sheet got to a level of stress that you were you know, not comfortable going beyond. So what I would suggest to investors is look for situations like this in the stock market. And the tobacco industry is one very, very good example. Very cash flow generative business, wonderful, wonderful business with certain headwinds, admittedly. But they can produce this kind of benefit uh, for shareholders just by borrowing cheap and retiring expensive equity. And I would think about maybe the utility sector where you might be able to find examples where this could be done. Maybe under certain uh, circumstances, some industrials and in the consumer product space in general. So look for that and think of this kind of thing that can be done now, uh, which is very long-term, well-matched sort of liability uh, you know, asset match where you get, can get 20 year paper at a good price and retire perpetual equity at an even better price and capture the spread. Uh, this creates value for shareholders and you wanna keep this in mind. So I hope these videos help. And uh, as always, thank you for watching.